Well, good evening, and thank you for joining us for our Sunday evening service tonight. We are looking forward to uh, seeing what the Lord has for us this evening and uh, letting His Word speak to us tonight. So again, thank you for joining us, and uh, we're going to uh, get into God's Word tonight in Matthew chapter number 6. And uh, tonight we're going to do a little bit of a, of a different uh, type of topic, I guess you could say. And uh, we're going to borrow a phrase from an old song, Don't worry, be happy. And we're going to be in Matthew chapter 6 and read verse 24 through 34. So let's pray together real quick, and then we'll jump right in uh, to the lesson tonight. Father, we love you. We thank you for all you do. Thank you for the privilege we have to be uh, gathered around your word tonight, even though it's uh, via the internet. Uh, we're thankful that we can do this, Lord. And we just pray you'll bless our study now tonight as we look into your word. Uh, Lord, bless the, the, the preaching and the teaching tonight. Maybe something that will help us and challenge us and grow us and even encourage us tonight, Lord, we pray. Uh, we thank you again for all you do, and we just pray that you bless our time now together. We ask these things in your name. Amen. All right, let's look at Matthew uh, chapter 6, and we'll begin there. We'll read through our scripture together tonight, and we will pick up in verse number 24, read down to the end of the chapter, verse number 34. The Bible says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, uh, can add one cubit unto his stature? Uh, verse 28, And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Uh, and yet I say, oh, sorry, I turned out too quick. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need uh, of all these things. Look at verse 33 and 34, and we'll close the passage out here. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the days, the evil thereof. Uh, we are familiar with uh, probably a portion of this passage, if not the entire uh, context there. And of course we focus in on verse 33 a lot, seek first the kingdom of God. Uh, but we have a challenge here given to us I want to kind of expound upon tonight. And as we go through our points tonight, we'll go back and look through these verses and, and bring them back uh, to light. I, uh, I heard about the uh, sign outside of a church building one time. And, of course, you have to be very careful what you put on your church signs, uh, grammatically speaking. And the church sign said this, don't let worry kill you. Let the church help. Now, obviously, as Christians, we think, okay, better may let the church help you. But when you read that, you're thinking the church wants to help kill you. Uh, we understand that worry is a, a big problem in our world today. Uh, worry is something that can stress you out. It uh, can cause physical, spiritual, emotional, uh, mental problems in your life. We understand that. Uh, worry can hurt. Uh, and so as a church tonight, I do want to try to help you with worry. Uh, years ago, I believe it was in the late 80s, maybe about 1988, uh, a song became very popular. Uh, it was simply entitled, Don't Worry, Be Happy. The first part of the lyrics go like this, and I think it's uh, appropriate for us to think about even today. It says this, here's a little song I wrote. You might want to sing it note for note. Don't worry, be happy. In every life we have some trouble. When you worry, you make it double. Don't worry, be happy. Now, again, I know there's more to that, that, that song than just that little bit that I read. Uh, but whether he knew it or not, he wrote a song that truly echoes Scripture and what Jesus teaches us in the area of worry. And so I want to take his, uh, his song title this evening, if you will, and, and I want to preach to you just for the next few minutes on that title, Don't Worry, Be Happy. We read our text, so let's uh, break it down tonight, and, and let's look at this topic of Don't Worry, be happy. Uh, number one, I want us to understand this from verse number 25. 
Worry is a waste of life. Worry is a waste of life. Look again back at verse number 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat in the body than raiment? Uh, Jesus, I believe in this verse, is simply trying to teach us the importance of life. Uh, life is greater than what you eat and what you drink and the activities that you partake in and the, and the clothes that you wear and the money that you make. Life is so much more than that. Worry, when we worry about the things of life, if you will, actually leads us to waste our life because we're so busy worrying about things. Worry causes us to live in the basement and keeps us from making it to the top floor. Uh, we're always worried down here and we never get what God truly has for us in life. Uh, the fact is you will face trouble in life. You're not going to get away from that. Uh, but don't stop your life when you run into trouble. And don't stop your life worrying about what trouble is going to come or the trouble that you're in. When you stop, you're an easier target for the enemy. Worry does not eliminate uh, uh, your trouble, uh, but it accelerates trouble. Uh, sometimes we think, man, if I worry about it, it'll go away. And, and really, it just makes it worse. Uh, there's a quote uh, uh, a preacher said years ago, Worry is interest paid on trouble before it falls due. Worry is interest paid on trouble before it falls due. If you're a worrier, uh, let me just say this, you're not going to score good marks on being a good steward of what God has given you. Uh, your, your time, uh, your talents, your treasure, uh, you're going to waste those things away worrying. Your finances will struggle, your family will struggle, your talents will struggle, uh, serving God will struggle. It'll be a waste of life when we spend time worrying. Number two, and we'll look at verse number 34. Worry is a waste of energy. It's a waste of energy. Not only am I wasting away my life and what I could be doing for Christ, it, it really burns my energy up. Look at verse 34 again. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Uh, A.J. Cronin makes this statement. Worry never robs tomorrow of its sorrow, it only saps today of its strength. Uh, boy, God gives us grace uh, every day of our lives to handle the day that he's given us. Uh, don't use uh, Thursday's grace on Wednesday because you're worrying. Uh, don't, don't waste grace, if you will. Uh, worry is a waste of energy. Uh, we're supposed to not expend our mental energies questioning God, uh, asking questions he's already answered, worrying about things we know he's in control of. Doubt is poison. Doubt uh, uh, festers the head full of worry, and we begin questioning and doubting God at every turn. Worry is a waste of energy. They did some research on this topic of worry, and they, they found out that uh, most human beings do an, uh, uh, a great deal of unnecessary worrying. Uh, they, they did a chart, and they did some research, and they break the chart of worry down like this. I want to show you this. I, I saw this, and I thought, wow. Uh, and, of course, as you really think about it, it's, it's probably pretty true. Uh, they broke down worry, and here's what they said. Things that never happen is 40% of our worries. Things that never can Now, again, you talk about wasting your life and wasting your energy, worrying about things that never even happen. That's 40% of our worry. Uh, secondly, uh, things past which cannot be changed or corrected is 30% of the things we worry about. Now again, that's 70% of our worries wrapped up in those two things. Things I cannot fix that are in the past and things that never even happen in today or in tomorrow. What a waste of energy worry is. Now again, we have 30% left. Let's look at the rest of worry. Needless worry about health is 12%. Now, I understand there are times like we do have health issues and we are concerned about those issues, but many times we needlessly worry about our health, and that's 12% of our worries. Uh, petty, petty miscellaneous worries was 10%. Uh, just some small things, things that really, really weren't that significant, really weren't that important, but we spent time worrying about them, 10%. And then the last one, the last 8%, uh, were real and legitimate worries. Real things that, man, you, you really really could spend time worrying about, and it was okay because you should. Um, 8%. 8%. Uh, by the way, maybe that's why Jesus gives us Matthew chapter 6, verse number 34. and says, man, stop worrying about tomorrow. Stop worrying about tomorrow. It'll take care of itself. I'm in charge. 
if you use all your energy worrying, uh, what do you have left to do with the important things? Again, we talk about wasting your life. Now we're talking about wasting your energy. How can you serve God when you've zapped your energy worrying? How can, you, how can you be what you need to be for your family when you've zapped your energy worrying? How can you be even at work what you need to be when you've zapped your energy worrying? Especially worrying about these things that don't even happen <laughs> or that you can't change. Worry is a waste of energy. Worry is a waste of life. Let me give you number three. Worry is a waste of time. It's a waste of time. Look back at verse number 27. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Now, again, you say, what, what, what does that do? That? Think about it. Every one of us has something in our life about us that we wish we could probably change. But do any of us have the power to say, oh, I wish I were a foot taller and it's going to happen? No. Oh, I wish I were a few inches thinner. Uh, it's not just going to happen. It takes work, right? Oh, I wish my hair color were this. I know you can go get a kit. I get that. But you understand what I'm saying? I wish I were. It doesn't happen. We worry about things. It's a waste of time. Jesus reminds us that mental time spent worrying doesn't change anything. We cannot change uh, the height of our stature. It's a waste of time. I heard about the doctor, and he had uh, finished an examination with his patient, and the patient was suffering from an ulcer. And after the doctor was finishing the exam, the patient was very concerned. And he says this, Doctor, I'm worried about the fact that worrying about my ulcer might make it worse. Yeah, you think? I'm worried about worrying. Uh, it's a waste of time. There's an old Jamaican proverb that does a pretty good job, really, of summarizing biblical uh, truths about worry and prayer. And it says this, If you're going to pray, don't worry. If you're going to worry... Don't pray. Uh, if you're going to pray, don't worry. If you're going to worry, don't pray. They don't go hand in hand. Use the energy uh, that you could use in, in worrying, and instead use it praying. Uh, use it praying. Uh, don't uh, waste your energy. Don't waste your life. Don't waste your time, uh, if you will, uh, on worry. Uh, you can see sickness healed by prayer, never by worry. You can see bills paid by prayer. Never by worry. You can see marriages restored by prayer. Never by worry. You can see children uh, corrected and brought back on track by prayer. Never by worry. You can see souls saved by prayer. Never by worry. You can see prodigals come home by prayer. Never by worry. You can see lives changed dramatically by prayer. Never by worry. Worry is a waste of time. It's a waste of time. Let me give you number four. Number four. Worry is an enemy of faith. Of course, as Christians, the most important thing we have in our lives is our, is our faith. And that faith, of course, is in God above, in Jesus Christ, not in ourselves. Worry is an enemy of faith. Look at verse number 30. Verse number 30 we read earlier. Wherefore, if God so clothes the, clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of what? Little faith. Little faith. Jesus concludes that the worry problem is really a faith problem. He tells them when you worry, it shows little faith. Uh, Dr. Peter Marshall, he is the late chaplain of the United States Senate, uh, once he opened the United States Senate with this prayer, Help us, God, to do our very best this day and be content with today's troubles so that we shall not borrow the troubles of tomorrow. Save us from the sin of worrying, lest ulcers be the badge of our lack of faith. What, what, what an awesome prayer. I'm going to say it for you one more time. Help us, God, to do our very best this day and be content with today's troubles, so that we should not borrow the troubles of tomorrow. Save us from the sin of worrying, lest ulcers be the badge of our lack of faith. Uh, what an important prayer he prayed every day, uh, and he prayed for the United States Senate. Oswald Chambers writes this, All worry is caused by calculating without God. By calculating without God. I put with up there, I apologize. Calculating without God. Uh, figuring out the plans without including God. Figuring out how to do things, humanly speaking, without God's perspective. Uh, that's why all worry is, is, uh, is caused. I heard about a businessman, he, he ran into a friend of his one day, 
uh, and the friend was a stockbroker, and uh, he'd always had a problem with ulcers and high blood pressure and all that because of the, the, the line of work he was in, the stockbroker. And, and uh, the businessman asked his friend, he said, how's your health doing? And uh, the stockbroker said, man, it's great. My ulcers are gone away. I don't have a worry in the world. It's just amazing. And the businessman asked his friend, he said, well, how in the world did, did that happen? The stockbroker said, oh, it's easy, it's easy. I hired a professional warrior. I hired a professional warrior. Whenever something comes along that I need to worry about, I tell him, and he does all the worrying for me. The businessman couldn't believe it. He said, man, that's incredible. I think I might be interested in something like that. How much does this cost? The stockbroker said, oh, he charges me $100,000 a year. The businessman said, man, how in the world can you afford to pay him $100,000 a year? The stockbroker said, I don't know. I'd let him worry about it. <laughs> I thought, wow, it's pretty classic there. Uh, the stockbroker gave his worries to a professional worrier. And, and, and instead of doing that as Christians, we should give our worries to the king of kings. Does not God tell us, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you? He tells us to bring our petitions to the throne. He tells us to come boldly into his throne room. He wants to hear from us. He wants to bear our burdens. He wants to take our cares upon him. We say we believe God is all powerful. He meets needs and he provides and he answers prayers and he loves us and so on and so forth. And then I worry. What does it say? My faith is weak. My faith is weak. Worry is an enemy of faith. Let me give you number five. Number five. Worry is an enemy of your health. Worry is an enemy of your health. Think about it. If you're constantly worrying about what you're going to eat, uh, the worry may, about it might be just as, uh, maybe worse than just eating what you want. You know, if you're always, oh, i got to have this many calories and this many things and this many things. And again, I'm not bad, against bad health, good health, is what I'm saying. But I'm saying if you're constantly worried about every minute detail, uh, sometimes that's worse for your health than just eating something maybe you shouldn't have had at that particular minute, moment. Uh, in context, Jesus is addressing the people who are wondering, what are we going to eat? Uh, when's it time for another meal? And when, what's, what's going to be provided for us and all that? The point is, that's very simple, though. Worry is bad for you. Uh, it's bad for your health. Medical research has proven that chronic worry can even kill you. Worry is a spiritual disease that eats up your soul and your body, sapping it of its strength until all that is left is a fragile shell that could crumble into dust at any moment. Worry is an enemy of your health. Uh, somebody made this statement one time. I like that. I put it up here for you. Care to our coffin adds a nail, no doubt. And every grin so merry draws one out. Think about it. The more I'm stooped and worry and concern and care, burden, uh, the, the, the closer it seems I draw myself to my deathbed. It affects my health. Dr. Charles Mayo of the Mayo Clinic said this, worry affects the circulation, the heart, the glands, the whole nervous system. I've never known a man who died from overwork, but many who died from doubt. Worry. Uh, we see that. It affects our health. Dr. Robert Elliott, uh, he's a cardiologist, a heart doctor uh, from Nebraska, actually, and he gives us two rules. He gives us two rules for managing stress and worry. He knows how it affects the health. He teaches people how badly it affects the health. So he gives two rules on how to deal with stress and worry so it doesn't affect the health. And here they are. Number one, don't sweat the small stuff. Again, that list we gave, that percentage we gave about worrying about things that we don't need to worry about, that's what we're talking about here, okay? Now, don't sweat the small stuff. And the second point is this. It's all small stuff. <laughs> it's all small stuff. He's simply saying this. Don't worry. Stop worrying. It will ruin your health. Number six. Number six, worry is fuel for your flesh. It's fuel for your flesh. Look at verse 31. Uh, Therefore, uh, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, Jesus in this verse is teaching us that when we start worrying, our mouth starts speaking things maybe that it should not speak. Uh, you notice in verse number 31, uh, it says, take no, therefore no thought, saying... The mind starts to provide words of doubt to the mouth, and our flesh runs with it. Uh, when the mind starts to, to work on worry, the mouth starts to speak worry, and all of a sudden our body moves forward into action. Worry, worry, worry. 
Worried thinking leads to worried talking. Uh, you know, you could talk yourself out of the blessings of God. You could talk yourself out of allowing God to provide something for you in your life. You could talk yourself out of allowing God just to show up and work in your life. Um, let, me, let me say this about worry here. When you worry, you hand the devil a key to access your thought life. Think about that for just a moment. When you worry, your mind is not, not on the things of God. You're handing the devil a key to the door of your mind and saying, come on in. You can infiltrate my thoughts. You can put some thoughts into my head. Uh, I'll listen to you for a while. Worry is fuel for your flesh. We understand the importance of killing the old man. We understand the importance of dying to self and killing the flesh. And when I worry, I'm simply bringing the flesh back to life. Your imagination runs wildly away from God. It can ruin your testimony. It can hurt your chance to, to witness and share the gospel with others. Worry is damaging. It's fuel for your flesh. Let me give you one more. Number seven. Number seven. Worry is a thief that robs you of God's best. It's a thief that robs you of God's best. Look at verse number 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's the best thing we can do in life. That's the best we can have, the things of God. His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. But when I worry, I rob myself of the best that God has for me. Billy Graham said this, Anxiety is the natural result when our hopes are centered on anything short of God and his will for us. Anxiety is the natural result. Worry. Uh, when, when my hopes are centered on anything short of God and his will. Uh, worry is a thief that robs us of God's best. I know a lady who uh, cannot enjoy spending time with her children or her grandchildren even because of worry. She will not go and visit her children or her grandchildren because she worries if she leaves someone will break into her house. Uh, she does not want them to come to her house because she's worried they might have a car accident on the way there or something negative might happen to them. And, and so she can't even enjoy fellowship with her own family because she is so riddled and bogged down with worry. Something will burn down. You know, the, uh, the stove might uh, pile up. Uh, and she's so riddled with worry. Worry robs you of God's best. Some people never know God's best because they worry so much about what other people might think. Why should you worry what somebody else thinks uh, if you're simply wanting to do the will of God? We need to wake up and realize, I need to stop worrying about what others say, what others think, what others want. And I need to truly focus on what the King of Kings wants and what his desire is for my life. Some people never do the will of God because they worry they'll make a mistake. Some people never do the will of God because they worry they won't uh, line up with God and, and make uh, be what they ought to be. You ever stop and think that... Uh, God uses imper imperfect people. Uh, that's the only people he has to use. God uses common imperfect people to do extraordinary things. Imperfection will not topple God from his throne. Uh, it will not stop him from fulfilling his purpose. Uh, we, we aren't perfect. We still serve God. Don't allow worry to rob you of God's best for your life. Uh, somebody made this statement. Worry is fear, and fear is faith in reverse. Well, what a, what, a, what, a, what a convicting statement. Worry is fear. Fear is faith in reverse. My faith is supposed to be in Jesus Christ, God, for everything. And when I'm worrying, I'm stepping backwards in faith. I'm not trusting him the way that I ought to. I'm full of fear. I'm riddled with it. And it's faith in reverse. They were talking to some kids one day about fear and, and, and these types of topics and worry. And uh, one little seven-year-old boy, he made this statement. If you love God, you never have to worry again. Well, how, how powerful from a seven-year-old. If you love God, you never have to worry again. Well, how true is that tonight? How true is that? If you truly love God and you're willing to step out in faith and trust in the way that we ought to, I have absolutely nothing to ever worry about in my life. The song says, don't worry, be happy. Why? Because God is in control. Uh, because God knows what he's doing. He's sovereign. He's in control uh, of my life. He's in control of our world. He's in control of our universe. Don't worry. Be happy. Uh, I, I pray tonight as we close our service, uh, if you're full of worry tonight, would you bring it to the Savior's feet? Would you drop it off at Calvary tonight? Would you let him take your cares upon him? Worry is a waste of life, time, and energy. It's an enemy of our faith. It's an enemy of our health. It fuels our flesh. And it robs us of God's best. Let's get the victory over worry tonight. Don't worry. Be happy.
God knows what he's doing. I know there's a lot going around us that's negative. I know, but don't worry. Don't worry. God has got this, and let's trust him. Be happy. Let's be an excited, happy Christian tonight, knowing God is already in our tomorrow. He's already in our future. He's got the whole world in his hands. He knows what he's doing. Let's trust him. Don't worry. Be happy. Father, Lord, I pray tonight that you'll take the things that have been shared now and use them in our lives to encourage us. Uh, help us, Lord, to uh, be people that don't worry as much, but instead turn our hearts and our lives over to you. And we trust you with all that you do, uh, knowing that you have the best in store for us and the best plan for us, and that you're a sovereign God and we can trust you. Help us, Lord, to deal with this thing of worry, I pray. Uh, Lord, we thank you again for the time we've had to open your word. Thank you for those that have joined us. And we just pray that you'll bless this and may we use it in our lives uh, to grow in our relationship with you in our Christian walk, we pray. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Thank you again for tuning in tonight and joining us. Uh, we will have an online Sunday evening service for a couple of more weeks. Uh, and then on the 30th, the last Sunday of August, uh, we're going to have a missionary with us. Uh, and he is going to meet with the church in person Sunday night to start back our Sunday night services right back in the auditorium. We will still post the video uh, of our Sunday evening services for those that are, you're watching online. We'll still post that. It'll be late uh, Sunday night or early Monday morning before it actually gets posted. Uh, but it will still get posted. But we're going to start meeting back in person uh, on August 30th. So we're excited about that as well. So I encourage you to uh, uh, keep tuning in or come and join us in person as well. And, of course, we meet in person uh, Sunday mornings at 1030 as well as Wednesdays at 7. So come and join us. And uh, God bless you. If you need anything, don't hesitate to, to let us know. Thank you.